All right, guys. So, saw a uh, video last night. Actually, I was just kind of screwing around on YouTube, and one of the videos I saw was this particular street uh, instructor showing people how to beat a BJJ guy. For you guys who don't know, uh, BJJ is Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. It's it's what the Gracies do. It's basically what UFC has become. Um, and one of the things that he was talking about is he was talking about, well, if a BJJ guy does this to you, then it's really simple. You just bite him here and punch him here and grab his, you know, testicles and you do all this stuff. And it's not based in reality. Um, and to do that, you know, or to kind of best illustrate that, what I wanted to do is I wanted to kind of just show this. So the red is this street fighting style. It could be any style. It doesn't even have to be BJJ. It can be any style. But let's just say the red is this street fighting style. And the green is BJJ. Basically, what this guy is saying is that the BJJ guy is going to grapple you. And what he's going to do is he's going to elevate the level of intensity up to no rules level, biting, eye gouging, things like that. So basically, just to explain this, the first, the lowest level, we have grappling. And an example of that might be wrestling. And then we have striking. And an example of that would be kicking and punching. Then we have going up the, uh, the level of progression. We have no rules where you have things like biting, eye gouging, grabbing the testicles. I mean, just things like this. Just the, you know, street fight, nasty, dirty stuff. Then you have all your life-threatening things, gun, knife, baseball bat, needle nose pliers, whatever. You know, it's, it's tools that you're going to implement. And this guy's entire argument was based on the fact that the BJJ guy is going to come in and he's going to grapple you. So therefore, he's going to start biting and eye gouging and that is just going to systematically shut the guy down. That's not based in reality, and the reason is, is because the BJJ guy, first off, the move that he was showing is not even something, I mean, he's, he was showing something that is not even something that a grappler would do. It, in fact, it was something that any grappler of any proficient style would know not to do, but that's neither here nor there. But it's ba it was based on the fact that this guy, once this guy elevates his level of intensity, this guy is not going to, you know, and that was his entire argument is that this guy is not going to know what to do. He's going to stay in this grappling mode. And that's just simply not the case. When this guy elevates to biting and eye gouging, so am I. I may even take it one step further and go up the matrix that much further and pull out a knife and stab you. Um, so just understand that a lot of these arguments uh, regarding styles. First off, the, a lot of the arguments regarding styles have already been settled with the UFC. Uh, that's how the UFC came about was with individuals saying, oh, well, grappling doesn't work. I, I would just do this. So the Gracies got together and they created an event called the Ultimate Fighting Championship. And they were the ones who first formed the UFC and said, okay, you can do whatever you want. No, no body, no eye gouging. But that was it. You could still punch to the testicles. You could do everything that you wanted. And they were going to do what they did. And what they showed was season after season after season, you know, fight after fight, the Gracies consistently won. They were willing to take their style that they had basically um, created a hybrid from Japanese Jiu-Jitsu and Judo, they were going to take their style on the road, so to speak, and test it out and see this works or this doesn't. And they had such confidence in it that they took it on a world stage and they took all comers and they continuously won. Uh, it wasn't until the other styles started to realize that they were not going to be BJJ in a style versus style competition that they started to adopt BJJ into their training, and this is where the Gracies began to break down, is because the Gracies didn't um, 
didn't reach the same level of mastery in the mix of martial arts, which is what we now have today, MMA. But understand that when the Gracies first started this, before they ever came over to the U.S., they did this in Brazil, and it was called Valetudo, which is what we know as NHB, or No Holds Barred, which is not the same as MMA. NHB is what the UFC used to be, which means no rules, no gloves, you can do whatever you want, and it's your style versus mine, and let's match theories and see who comes out on top. Remember that the ultimate goal was to develop a style that was proficient uh, in amongst all the other styles. That it, 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 was, it was universal, so to speak. And that's what BJJ has become today. It has become ever-evolving, ever-changing. The black belts from 20 years ago are not the black belts of today. BJJ constantly adopts and changes, and uh, it's, it's one of the few styles that actually encourages evolution and growth versus some of the older uh, Oriental styles that really frowned on such things. So understand that when a lot of these arguments are made, when a lot of these videos are made that are, are not based in reality, a lot of them are done so using this same uh, method. They, they say things like, well, if the BJJ guy grapples me, I'll pull out my knife and kill him and stab him. Well, I'm not going to let you, dude, all right? I am going to pull out my gun and shoot you in the face. Understand that, that the threat matrix builds as the other individual builds to higher levels of progression of threat. So do the BJJ guys as well. The idea that I am going to stay in a grappling mode while you continue to pull out weapons is not based in reality. As you progress so will I. And that's how, that's where we basically come down to uh, the only way to actually validate what works and what doesn't is by shaking hands, going in the ring, and going force on force, and let's just see how things pan out. Which is one of the reasons why we stress force on force so much is because BJJ bought, brought that to, uh, to the different styles, brought that, uh, that vetting process. And force on force when it comes to combatives is that vetting process. You can do whatever you want to do and I will execute my techniques. And if my techniques do not pan out, then I will revise my techniques. If they do pan out, then we will pen that in as something that is valid. However, I am not going to become fixated on that. I'm going to allow myself to change and to evolve and as as my opponents change and evolve and as circumstances and as weapons change and technology and things like this, as all of these things start to change and evolve, I am going to do so with it. And that's really the only way that combatives can be done. So wanted to go ahead and lay that out there and hopefully give you guys maybe, uh, maybe some perspective uh, when you're reviewing not just my stuff but anybody's stuff. Um, you know, ask yourself, is it based in reality? Is it based on an equal level progression of threat, you know, increase? Or is it based on basically just a straw man argument that says, well, you know, if, if you do this, then I'll do this. You know, if that's what you're looking for, it's not based in reality. So, all right.